this is Richard Henderson. I'm the sexy one. And he's the best friend of the sexy one. That's okay. This man has been embarrassing me since college. Hey, Rich, be fair. I've actually been embarrassing you since grade school. Uh, Rich, how about checking this in? The sexy one has to find somebody to be sexy with. Friend. For 20 years. We have absolutely nothing in common, except 56 of us fraternity brothers invested $100 a piece into a pot about 12 years ago to go to the last bachelor. Ted and I are the only two left. Wow, 56 times 100, that's almost $6,000. A lot more than that. We invested the money in glamour stocks, which performed glamorously. Now it's worth about 50,000. Wow. So who's gonna hold out the longest? You know, I don't think either of us will ever get married. See, Ted, he likes all the ladies. And me, I, uh, I guess I'm married to my job. Hmm. That's Richard. What do you think of your future husband? Kind of cute. But I always hoped I'd marry for love. Well, don't look at me. I'm planning on a long and wealthy bachelorhood. Come on. Don't get cold feet now. Okay. A deal's a deal. Thanks, Paula. I knew I could count on an old friend like you. If I'm such an old friend, how come I've never met Richard before? Well, with $50,000 on the line, he hasn't exactly been anxious to meet girls. <laughs> Besides, I never thought of this idea before. <laughs> idea of trapping somebody in a marriage we're just setting a trap he's a free citizen nobody's forcing him to walk into it and besides you'll be getting ten thousand dollars from me and you can divorce him in six months sounds worse all the time don't worry now remember his weaknesses he's very practical that's right he's a nice man but very very slow with the dollar and he's very health conscious and he's a nut about being punctual and here he comes now. Don't forget punctuality. Hey, Dad, where'd you go? I thought you were going to wait for me to change. Uh, I'm sorry, Rich. I came out to get some sun. Say, listen. I hear there's a shuffleboard contest. What time do you have? It uh, is exactly 35 minutes and 7 tenths of a second past 3. Late that 8 tenths of a second. Are you always that time conscious? Yes, indeed. We're all servants of time. And by being punctual, we greatly please our stern employer. <laughs> Beautiful way to put it. Oh, well, come on, Rich. Let's go catch a shuffleboard contest. That's okay, Ted. You you go ahead. I'd like to talk some more to this young lady. <laughs> that is, if you don't mind. I don't mind. I plan to sit here for another 13 and um, three quarters minutes. You're very time conscious. Well, time is life. Life is time. <laughs> exactly. Where's Richard? He went to the cabin to get something. Oh, things are going just great. He's swallowing the whole thing, hook, line, and sinker. How do I look? Oh, just look casual, like you're out on a date. <laughs> oh, now listen, remember, at dinner, you have to convince him you're a fellow health nut. Turkey. Oh, that'd be a smart thing to order. <laughs> See you later. Sorry, I forgot my vitamins. Some people don't believe in vitamins, but I do. Oh, I take some vitamins myself once in a while. I used to take more vitamins, but I've cut down to only 53 different kinds before each meal. <laughs> These days, I'm concentrating more on herbs. I've found that squavine is absolutely marvelous for almost everything. Yuck, I'm sure you know, is for the muscles. <laughs> Skunk cabbage stops whooping cough in its tracks. I've given up all hope of ever meeting a woman like you. <laughs> You're a marvelous dancer. Oh, thank you. I used to be very clumsy until I started running 12 miles a day. Six miles forward, six miles backward. You're a very nice dancer, too. In fact, 
You're a very nice man. I'll go get us a couple of grapefruit juices. Remember. I know. One glass of grapefruit juice, one glass of ice. <laughs> This is easier than I thought it would be. I think he's in love with you. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it so much. I feel terrible. How can you play such a dirty trick on a good friend of yours? Listen, if one of us doesn't get married, that money's going to stay there forever. This way, uh, at least one of us will get to enjoy it. <laughs> we still have a deal, don't we? Yes. Then keep dancing, kid. <laughs> Aren't you surprised about us? Surprised isn't the word for it. <laughs> Who would have ever thought I'd find my future wife on this cruise? Who indeed? <laughs> I'm gonna miss you, old buddy. Oh, yeah? Well, while you're missing me, you can sit around and count your money, too. <laughs> Come on, Polo, let's walk off this breakfast. See you later, kid. Well, everything's arranged just the way you want it. They can get married in the city hall in Acapulco. They do look happy, don't they? Yep. Tell me something. Hmm. For a man who just won $50,000, why don't I feel happier? <laughs> Maybe you're starting to realize that your friend may have gotten the better end of the deal. Of course, I'm biased. I'm a woman. <laughs> I think we should drink a toast to our marriage. To the woman I waited for all my life. I can't marry you, Richard. What do you mean, you can't marry me? Ted set the whole thing up with me. To win the $50,000. I don't believe this. You're just too nice a guy to go through with it. You mean everything was a lie? Everything. Ted thinks the reason I was doing it was because he was going to give me $10,000. The real reason is I was hoping to make him jealous. I feel terrible. I'm sorry, Richard. I am gonna get that louse. I don't know how and I don't know when, but I am going to get him. You're gonna help me. Won't be long now before I'll be Mrs. Richard Henderson. How do you like my wedding dress? Oh, you look lovely. Hey, that's the way you wore your hair when we first met. Is it? Sure, don't you remember? Oh, women don't remember those silly things. Uh, and isn't that the perfume you always wore? Yes and no. Behind this ear is new. Behind this ear is the one you remember. Oh, that's even better than I remember. Richard loves it, too. I'm so lucky. Some people marry for love, some for money. I'm marrying for both love and money. I have you to thank for it. Yeah, I fixed things up real good. Is something wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Nothing, except that I love you. Ted, please, I'm practically married. Well, then you're also still practically single. <laughs> Marry me when we get to Acapulco. Marry you? That's right. I want you to live with me in a big house with lots of kids. What about Richard? We won't have room. I mean, lots of kids. I can't do it to him. It'll break his heart. He'll have $50,000. He can get a transplant. What do I tell him? Nothing. Nothing. I'll tell him after the wedding. You're both very nice. Please. Well, I guess I have known you longer. <laughs> And so, in front of his witnesses, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Ha! <laughs> I got you! I got you! You tried to do it to me, but I did it to you! 
it. Is he telling the truth? Did you set me up? There you are, Paula. $10,000 for helping me out-scheme the schemer. <laughs> would, would somebody finish kissing the bride for me? you that you only had to be married to Richard for six months, then you could divorce him? Yeah, I remember. Well, in divorcing me, how about doing me a favor? And don't wait so long. Ted, I want to try to explain. <laughs> Look, Paula, there's nothing to explain. I tried to con Rich. Instead, he conned me. I got caught in my own trap. No, it's not the same trap at all. That money wasn't for me. It was for us, for our marriage. I love you. I have for years. But you let Richard set me up. No. I let Richard do me a favor. Come to think of it, I haven't kissed the bride yet. May I? Till I tell you to stop. Thank you. 